a 16-cylinder is a rare breed, and while most brands hardly come close to making one, their manufacturers, which managed to produce two and gained incredible popularity as a result. British Racing Motors was renowned for its tiny yet powerful V16. Undeterred, the team explored another 16-cylinder adventure thanks to loose engine regulations. BRM's H16 serves as a great example that combining two successful engines does not necessarily result in another victorious power play. In the early 1960s, BRM boasted a powerful 1.5 litre V8 engine that brought the team numerous notable achievements, including constructors and a driver's championships. The B56 was a modern, fuel injected, two valve engine with relatively simple construction. However, as Formula 1 transitioned to the 3 litre era in 1966, BRM had to develop a new power unit. While they could have opted for a supercharged engine, their prior experience suggested that the engine would be complicated, awkwardly shaped and heavy. Therefore, they opted for an even more complicated 16-cylinder design instead. Perhaps a single intercooler and some piping would not be as tough to implement on a simple engine after all. When the decision was made to proceed with a naturally aspirated unit, the choice of a cylinder count became critical. Options ranging from 8 to 24 cylinders were considered, however, it was deemed impossible to run the V8 at required engine speeds, and the 24 cylinder configuration only offered marginal advantages of the 16 cylinder design. Two separate teams conducted studies one focusing on a conventional V12 layout, while the other explored the potential of an H16 configuration. The V16 was dismissed due to its excessive length, and the W16 was impractically wide. Construction limitations revealed that the V12 car would likely not support the engine as a stressed member, leading to the eventual selection of the H16 engine. Arguably, the most complex Formula 1 engine in the sport's history. Reflecting on the decision from today's perspective, opting for an H16 may seem absurd for a Formula 1 engine, but let's delve deeper. During the early stages of development, Tony Rudd, a former aviation engine designer, spearheaded the engine design. He was intrigued by the powerful, high-speed Napier Dagger engine and saw potential in utilizing two flattened BRM V8s stacked on top of each other. This configuration would maintain a short and relatively low engine footprint. However, the solution was more complex than initially anticipated. BRM envisioned cost savings by repurposing V8 internals and estimated that by doubling the number of cylinders and displacement, the power output would be also doubled. The BRM P75 was essentially designed as two Big Bang engines combined into one, resulting in twice as many components across the board. Two crankshafts, double the camshafts, water pumps and radiators, ignition and fuel injection systems, and host of additional challenges. Initially, the design incorporated two flat plane common pin crankshafts carried over from the V8 engine. While this configuration is suitable for a 90 degree engine, flattening it to 180 degrees meant the two cylinders of either of flat 8s fired simultaneously, resulting in what is known as a long bank firing. Although the crankshafts were offset 90 degrees from each other, 
to reduce firing pulses to 90 degrees, the engine suffered from this violent firing sequence. To facilitate easier crankshaft assembly, the aluminum crankcase was split 63.5 mm from the engine centerline. Initially, the heads were merged together for the top and bottom banks. Engineers initially attempted to utilize a single intake cam per side, but encountered issues such as the crankshafts being positioned too closely or valve angles being excessively wide. In the initial 32 valve variant, intake ports ran between the intake and exhaust camshafts, whereas in the later 64 valve version, the trumpets were positioned closer together between the cylinder banks. This distinction provides one of the simple methods for differentiating between these engine variants. With cylinders measuring 70 by 49 mm, the engine featured tiny pistons capable of revving upwards of 10,000 rpm. In addition to the 8 cam setup, the 32 valve engine required up to 96 valve springs to withstand the high engine speeds. On paper, the P75 engine showed promise, and various tests demonstrated exceptional volumetric efficiency and engine breathing. At 10,000 rpm, it achieved an impressive 110% volumetric efficiency, and even the two-valve 16-cylinder variant boasted superior breathing compared to the V8, thanks to its narrow valve angle. Significant power gains were also realized by using a smaller water pump impeller to avoid overcooling the combustion chamber. However, the primary issue stemmed with vibrations caused by the selected crankshaft firing sequence. While an 8-throw cross-plane crankshaft was developed to address this, its sheer length necessitated a complete overhaul of the engine. As a temporary solution, steel rings were added to the crankshaft for balancing, albeit at the cost of increased weight. Although this measure partially mitigated the vibration issues, many gearboxes died due to the vibrations. During the winter period, a new crankshaft design was introduced, but machining errors led to numerous rod failures and subsequent catastrophic engine failures. While lighter, this new design failed to deliver any power gains. To improve reliability, BRM adopted a proactive approach, replacing components prematurely based on their anticipated working life. Output gear bearings, output gears, and camshaft bolts were particularly prone to failure due to the extreme harmonics generated by the two V8s. Despite these efforts, the engine continued to underperform, producing only 240 horsepower at 7000 rpm compared to the 140 horsepower at the half-size V8 at the same revs. The H16 had a very narrow usable power band. During the design phase, BRM initially anticipated the reuse of various V8 parts such as the connecting rods, valves, pistons and camshafts. However, the inherent complexity of the project rendered this approach impractical, especially if the goal was to achieve maximum power. The narrow valve angle necessitated larger bores, which in turn altered the cylinder ratio, requiring larger pistons a different crankshaft stroke, and other modifications. The initial projected number of six camshafts eventually grew to eight, and the various solutions were implemented to simplify engine crankcase assembly, albeit at the expense of added weight. Race weekends were fraught with problems, resulting in 27 DNFs out of 30 retirements across 40 races. Even when the engine managed to run, its performance was lackluster due to its sheer weight and underpowered nature. While the engine was indeed powerful, with its first version delivering 390 horsepower at 10,250 rpm at the weight of 550 pounds, 
plus an additional 118 parts for the gearbox. Its competitiveness was severely hampered by its substantial weight. In fact, the car was 10 to 20% heavier than its rivals, making it extremely challenging to outperform the more agile machines on the grid. In addition to the BRMP83, the H16 engine found its way into a Lotus 43, as Colin Chapman was unable to procure a suitable 3 litre engine before the Cosworth DFE became available. However, the Lotus 43 only competed in 5 races, experiencing 4 retirements. Despite its limited success, the H16 managed to secure 1 victory. During its lifespan, with Jim Clark at the wheel during the 1966 US Grand Prix in the Lotus 43. Additionally, it clinched a single second place finish at the 1967 British Grand Prix, driven by Jackie Stewart in a BRM car. However, beyond these rare triumphs, the H16 proved to be a lackluster engine overall. Characterized by poor handling, underwhelming power delivery, an abysmal reliability, the H16 was widely criticized. Stewart famously likened its handling to that of a pregnant elephant. Slow, unresponsive and clumsy, lacking agility and finesse on the track. Despite early calculations projecting an output of 500 horsepower and a weight of 400 pounds, the H16 failed to meet these expectations. The highest measured output reached only about 402 horsepower, with the winning US engine producing a mere 375 horsepower. Furthermore, the final version boasting 64 valves and 128 valve springs with magnesium castings and titanium blocks reportedly weighed around 400 pounds but hardly raised. Finally, BRM managed to convince Colin Chapman that they could develop a 650 horsepower version of the H16 engine for indie racing. Displacing 4.2 liters, it essentially inherited every problem from its Formula 1 counterpart. Despite larger cylinders in every dimension, running at 10,000 RPM rendered it rough, harsh and prone to breaking parts. Even with strengthened components, the engine could only endure 5 laps before experiencing catastrophic failures, such as the expulsion of its sent gear and all the bearings from the output gear set. This version produced 585 horsepower. However, the engine's persistent and intensive breakdowns, coupled with its overweight and underperformance, led to the abandonment of the Indy project. Consequently, the Lotus 42 received a Ford engine instead, marking the end of the ill-fated foray into indie racing for the troubled H16 engine. Regrettably for BRM, their second attempt at a 16-cylinder engine has gone down in history as one of the most complex and worst engines in Formula 1. While the H16 produced an angry and potent soundtrack, it failed to live up to the hype it generated, ultimately falling short of expectations.